Hey gang and welcome to the first lesson in this complete SAS tutorial. Now first of all, what is SAS and why would we even want to use it? So I guess we could describe SAS as CSS on steroids, or as the official website likes to put it, CSS with superpowers. It's a language that basically extends CSS to give it extra features or superpowers that make writing styles easier, more flexible and more reusable. Now it does this by bringing typical programming constructs like functions, loops, variables and inheritance into CSS. And it just makes CSS so much more flexible and powerful in the way that we write rules. For example, we could loop through a list of colors and generate a background color class and a font color class for each of them. And we'll see that kind of example in action later on. It also adds other features to CSS like rule nesting, invisible comments, parent selectors, and a lot of other stuff, which make it much easier to write complex CSS selectors. Now, SAS is extremely popular in the dev community. Lots of companies use it in their code base, and it's also used to build CSS frameworks and libraries like Bootstrap and Bulma. And speaking of CSS libraries, that's exactly what we're gonna be building in this series. A mini CSS library, similar to something like Bootstrap or Tailwind, using SAS. And it's gonna include a load of utility classes for things like spacing, border radius, opacity, and all that jazz, as well as a responsive grid system and some ready-made components like cards, buttons, and a navbar. And then you can customize and reuse that CSS library in your own personal projects to speed up your development. And while we do this, you're gonna learn all the basics of SAS as well as some of the more advanced features too. Now, before you start, I would suggest that you already know a couple of things. First of all, CSS, since SAS is built on top of CSS, and it's not going to make much sense to you unless you already understand the very basics, at least. Secondly, I'd suggest that you know at least the foundations of any programming language that include variables, loops, and functions. So it could be JavaScript or Python or something else entirely. It doesn't really matter what language it is as long as you understand those fundamental concepts because we're going to use those while we code with SAS. Now, I guess this is not completely essential because I will explain these things as we use them, but it would be a huge advantage to have that background knowledge. So I'm going to leave a link to my HTML and CSS crash course for you to learn CSS if you need to brush up those skills, as well as my modern JavaScript course as well. And those links are going to be in the description down below. So definitely check out those first if you need to get up to speed. Otherwise, you're good to dive right in. All right then, now browsers don't understand raw SAS files. We can't just hook up a SAS file to our HTML pages like we would a CSS file and just expect it to work. It won't. We need to process SAS into CSS before it works in a browser. And that's really easy to do. There's a ton of free tools that can do it for us. The way we'll be doing it is by using a task runner called Gulp, which we're going to talk about later on. But it does mean that you're going to need Node.js installed on your computer because we'll be using the Node package manager to install Gulp and some plugins into our project. Now, you don't need to know a thing about Node.js at all. You just need to have it installed on your computer. That's all. So to install it, head to nodejs.org and click the download button right here to download one of the latest versions. Once you've done that, just go through all the installation steps and keep the default suggested settings. Okay then, so one more thing. I've uploaded all of the course files for this course onto GitHub using this repo right here, complete SAS tutorial. So I'm gonna leave the link to this repo down below the video. Now each lesson in the course has its own branch in this repo. So to get the code for lesson 10, for example, you'd select the lesson 10 branch from the dropdown. And then once you've done that, you can click on the green code button right here and download the zip file for this lesson, which is gonna contain all of the code for this lesson. Or if you prefer, you can just clone the entire repo to your desktop and work with it that way. Anyway, that's your quick introduction to SAS and this course. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to create your first SAS file and then compile that to CSS.